This video is about some quirks I've discovered that are a part of being a scapegoat in a narcissistic family way and beyond interactions with your family. I thought that narcissism was just about the family unit and um, how that affected your relationship with your parents and your siblings and then I thought the rest of the extended problems like um, not being able to relate to other people easily was all going to fall away when the understanding of one's own subjugation and belittlement was going to settle because one of the big reasons for that is I've noticed myself especially when I was a lot younger that I was trying to get people to hear that I, I wasn't in a good way that I wasn't able to do the things that other people could do naturally and I didn't know why now I know why and I thought a lot of things were, then would, 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 would be resolved. I mean, the mo one thing that does work is you are more comfortable with it. Like, you realise there's a good reason why you've had this sort of chip on your shoulder and this feeling of uh, um, desperation and a feeling of... Uh, That you're a natural around people um, that you can't naturally relate to other people uh, I thought once the hard part of recovery was done just just the, just the knowledge that I was I, there was there was a good reason for everything it wasn't my fault you know it wasn't just that I was useless or that I was weird because that's the thing that I think we all know is it doesn't really make any sense because we try hard like we try harder and it's the trying harder that makes us unnatural it's one of the elements that makes us unnatural the lack of spontaneity the lack of uh, being able to relate to common cues and yet being painfully aware of what other people are feeling and thinking. I, I mean, finding out about narcissism and finding out that it, it matches your problem set, you know, uh, narcissistic abuse, parental narcissistic abuse and scapegoating, it's it's like a it's a bit of a personal apocalypse, or a death and a rebirth, um, and um, you think the rebirth is going to be soon. You think it's going to be complete. You think. You think you're going to be resurrected as the person that you always thought you would have been. And this is what this video today is about. And if I can make, excuse me, a series of them, it's what the series will be about. I can't make any promises because my motivation has been very, very low. I've had to rest a lot. I've been put on some medication. Um... I've had to put my health, you know, way before the channel, uh, as you'd expect, I, I hope. Um, so, let's try and dig into this. Here's, here's why I decided to press record today. Here's, because I, 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 I'm aware I'm not being academic, I'm not explaining myself adequately, I'm not very good at 
approaching these things academically. So what I've no, what I've learned about my videos is I have to go with the I have to tease out the entry point into what's on my mind and what made me press record today is I've had some interactions with uh, friends of mine today, a couple of friends of mine. I've had some problems with people recently. I've been, I mean, I'm, I'm very isolated at the moment. This isn't all bad. I, I really need the rest. But it gives you a lot of time to think and reflect and think about your relationships with people. Um, my partner or ex-partner, I can't tell, we've been on and off and on and off since the Christmas before last. Um, every three or four months she was coming out of this vindictive stupor that she's in, which is, she's got a tendency to be like that, but it used to be a couple of weeks and then she would come out of it. But since she's been put on duloxetine, she's been uh, in this phase for months at a time instead of weeks. And the last time was, she even we had much less of an argument. I, I, I was even more, com I didn't, I think I raised my voice once and that was only because she wouldn't let me speak. And I mean, you know, hit after I wasn't getting more than two or three words out and she'd be in and she was being very aggressive and I just raised my voice enough to say you've got to let me finish what I'm saying because she wasn't letting me speak that was it didn't get angry didn't shout didn't um there were no kids in the house so that wasn't an issue anyway you know but she's like she's uh acting you know, in a pathological way towards me. and I can't even begin to tell you. And we had Christmas together. I, I spent a fortune on her and the children. I don't mind. I wanted to. But her behaviour doesn't match our history, our recent history. It doesn't match anything. So there's that. I'm having problems with friends. And for some reason, I'm watching my experience. It's just... For some reason, my narrative at the moment is that everybody is mistreating me very subtly. I'm just being slowly undermined all the time. And any attempt, when I try to stand up to people or challenge them or address the issue, I'm finding that people are becoming um, narcissistic and childlike. And it's a really weird place to land after going through so much. For those of you that don't know, I looked after my mother for a long time and it was only after she died, the behaviour of my uh, father and my siblings, who had left me to it all that time. It was, all, it was the best part of a decade. It was so irrevocably awful, their behaviour. And I was, and my therapist told me to check out a Richard Grennan video when she got to the point where I guess she thought I needed to know about this stuff, and that was it. And I didn't, I didn't assume straight away that it was definitely narcissism. Um, but as soon as I heard about it, and it was the Richard Grennan video, "Why Your Family Hate You," I think it's called. And it was just like it's just like watching somebody pop ball after ball in a game of pool, you know, just clear the table. And I still didn't make my mind up straight away. I, I took my time. And I started watching Narcissism Survivor, and I started watching. I can't remember, there were quite a few. Uh, very quickly it went, uh, I watched Escape from Narcissism and I watched Ollie Matthews. Um, and I'm, I'm leaving people out, I, I remember, there, there were quite a few, I can't think of them all. 
and then really pretty pretty within a, within a few months I began to realize that this was it uh, but I've been through I mean losing your mother and looking after her for a long time and the strain of looking after someone which I'm not even going to try and get into now but it's not like looking after children it you know it, it the, the it's You, 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 you forgive me, but you are imprisoned in a situation when somebody's life is completely dependent on you all the time. And of course, I had. Now we know I had CPTSD when I started looking after her. So there's that. So after all I've been through, I find myself in a very odd place, very lonely place. But I'm, I'm okay with that. And I suspect that's the point of this experience. And I'm cross with everybody. I'm cross with my friends. I'm cross with um, um, my ex or my partner, whatever she is. And this is the lesson that I have to work on. Because... Knowing myself and my star sign, because I've got there's a whole star sign side to my understanding system that I haven't really talked about yet, but um, and put it all through narcissistic abuse and my temperament, all of it, and my my trigger, my problem area is is righteous indignation, self righteousness. Um, and I've noticed it seems to be a component in a lot of people's makeup who are recovering. And when I see flame wars explode in the community and disagreements explode, I notice how quickly, not that I follow them all, but I notice how sensitive and outraged people become and and we've got a we've got a in my opinion it, it's a it's a problem it's a lack of self-awareness it it's a lack of self-awareness in me self-importance is is narcissistic indignation is narcissistic self-righteousness is narcissistic and so it would begin to appear that we're invited in recovery to become like our abusers, which is really crap. And I, I've been on the receiving end of some really peculiar behaviour myself in this community, and seen it firsthand and I think what I noticed that my experience had two big components in it one was I thought everybody else was more recovered than I was so when I found out that people could behave like in an adolescent manner in this community which is what it is, and I think scapegoated, to be scapegoated is to have a perpetual, is, is to go into a prolonged adolescence. This is my experience of myself, and I found to my horror that other people in this community aren't particularly more advanced than I am. People that have been here longer, who have been very badly narcissistically abused, they're not stronger or wiser than me because they've been here longer. We're all pretty much the same. Some of us are better at certain things and addressing certain things. Uh, so certain people just through experience or through the, their personal makeup are very, very good at um, assessing other people's um, but I think I think Ollie's really good at 
I, I, I couldn't do what he does. He's very good at uh, making a very quick decision based on what he's hearing and the way he's hearing it about people. That's, that's his skill. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of women in this community uh, sort of who, who adhere to female uh, 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 testifiers in this community because they talk about issues they relate to on a feminine level and so on you know but we're not talking about that we're talking about talking about the, the very core of, of the recovery process the very the person and where they're at in the very very truth of where they're at this idea that we find out about narcissism and we're cured is nuts. We haven't even started. You're reeling in shock. It's not the big, that it isn't even the start. It's like if recovery was a movie, if it was a Star Wars movie, the bit when you find out about narcissism is the yellow crawl at the start. You've got a whole, at least one movie to get through, you know? Depending on which Star Wars movie it is. You ain't done. I ain't done. I know because I thought I was together. I thought I had my game together. And I had to go dark on the community and step back because I, uh, lots of reasons. But mo ultimately, because there came a point when externalizing my emotions wasn't the right thing for me to do and I've changed and as a result of that I'm not even the same person now that I was when I started my channel about two years ago it was about this time two years ago I think two or three years ago I can't be sure and um and I'm finding this much harder than I used to because I've started to rebuild and become a person. I wasn't a person before I found out about narcissism. I wasn't a person just after I found out about narcissism. I wasn't a person while I was running my channel through the early stage of my, the prologue of my recovery. I'm not a person now, but I'm beginning to understand what being a person is. But the problem is, it's so shit. It's fraught with difficulties and temptations. Don't despair. It may not be as shit for you as it is for me. You may not have... had quite the peculiar set of entrapments that I did you might have had more and if you have I, I can't help you if you've not had anything like the set of entrapments I had I probably can't help you either but if you follow if you're here if you're still here and you watch my videos you're probably in the same area that I am and you probably are getting something out of it and you would have turned off by now because my videos are long and they're um, uh, winding <laughs> 
so look and I, or I, I'm really struggling to make this today so and I, I'm gonna see if this works but I'm gonna go over I might have to stop soon but I'm gonna go over a few of the things that I found that make me realize that it's very very difficult to, to, to get better and it's this uh, Here's the thread that got me into the video today. My ex-partner, her behaviour has been extremely unfair and she's making it so I can't see uh, that her little boy, who I got really close to through no fault of my own because she was hospitalised over the first Christmas we were together and his father didn't take him and her mum, her the child's grandmother, she had responsibilities looking after her mother and it fell to me. I didn't have the child 24-7, I had the child throughout the day and the father took him in the evening and, and we were already getting close but this cemented our relationship and this child as far as he's concerned, I was the one that was there uh, three or four days of the week, even when Kelly came out, even when she came out of hospital. And um, for years, I was the one that was there. There's no confusion in his mind about who his who his biological father is, but he, we have a bond. You know, and um, and I'm very. It's tested me. I'm very angry and outraged and indignant that not only my partner, ex-partner, whatever, can't because that person has. Uh, she's uh, blocked me on Facebook, blocked me by messages, and you've got to understand, I don't torment her I don't you know I, all I, I don't abuse her she's, abu she's abusive I don't send abusive messages she'll send me abusive messages when she gets into these states I don't I try not to get into it at all sometimes I defend myself a little bit which I probably shouldn't bother even doing that but um, it does get it does get you down when people make allegations you know ridiculous allegations about you being unfair and selfish and and narcissistic she loves to say I'm narcissistic that's what you get for you know sharing what you're going through I guess but um here's the point of the video and I might I might wind it up and come back with another video if I because I'm struggling, but basically, I've started to fantasise about the things I would say to her to put her in her place, and when I fantasise about the things I'd say to her to put her in her place, I just sound like my dad. And it's so potent. It's so, it wants so badly. Like a little devil inside. That's, that's who it sounds like. And please understand, that I know it's hard when you don't know the situation. I'm not a saint, but I try my hardest to do right by everybody and everybody's being really shit and I'm getting bitter and angry and cold and when I start to come out of being cold all I've got is this me talking like my dad and I don't understand 
boy, I'm going through all this now. Except all I can imagine is like, you know, St. George and the Dragon. I've got to learn. I've got to beat the dragon. But I don't know if I can. I don't know, I don't know if I can be better. The temptation, the, the, the invitation in recovery to become a person who's just as shit as everybody else. That's where I am. I'm sorry it's not a positive video. I'm not in a positive place. Um, I'm fine, I'm okay. I just have to share this and I'm, I'm really sorry, it's a tough one. And uh, I really hope you're having a better time than me. But my main hope is if you're going through something like this too and don't understand it, because I barely understand it, I hope I've given you some tools to recognize and navigate this feeling because I certainly am working as hard as I can to fix this. And I'll leave that with you and I'll try and make another video. I'm sorry. It's like this. Take care, man.